Hey, welcome to Daintree JD, guys. Thanks for watching. Please remember to hit that uh, like button and subscribe. So this was a trip I headed up with my mother to see some of our elderly relatives up on the coastal islands off PNG. On the map here, the blue line represents the flights, the yellow is the four-wheel drive trip to Lay, and the red's the 17-foot open boat right through to Labla. Small boat, big ocean. So initially we took a flight from Cairns through to Port Moresby, So getting off the plane there at the International Airport in Port Moresby, it's a bit of a shell shock to be honest. Hadn't been up that way since I was a kid. But to see the amount of people just loitering around, watching other people's bags and that gave me a quite an uneasy feeling. And I think it's generally that there are some contingent of criminal activity there. I, I believe that. And... Um, certainly felt that way as we walked through to the domestic terminal on our connecting flight to NADSA. Even some of the staff appeared to slow us right down um, and it just felt really, really uncomfortable to be totally honest. I was glad to get out of there. So we eventually got onto our connecting flight which um, was quite an interesting ordeal uh, to get through their checking system and um, people were just pushing in line and forcing their way in. And, yeah, I think we nearly missed it to be honest and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not as forceful as some would be. Anyhow, we got to, into that flight and we headed toward NADZAP. Landing at NADZAP was another interesting experience. We uh, entered the, I suppose, the waiting area, baggage area, and it was really interesting because there was only about 30 people, 40 people on the plane, but we had this influx of people who were civilians come inside the airport, and there would have been close to 200 people in there, all grabbing bags. Uh, it was at this time when I noticed my bags being grabbed by other people and I had to confront them that they weren't their bags. So it was pretty pretty intense to be honest. Um, lucky I can speak pigeon and that's you know universal English up there and um, I managed to get my bags off them without too much without too much trouble but um, yeah then the the trip to Lay comes in where it's commonly known where that cars get held up and and uh, bags and jewellery and any money get um, requested or at gunpoint and that from um, the rascals. So that was the next fit coming up. It was all looking really not so good. And um, to say I was a little stressed, yeah, it's probably, probably a bit of an understatement because I know what could go wrong. And that was one of the reasons I was with my mother going up there to look after her on the way through. I always want to catch up the family. So there were no issues to report on the trip down to Lay, so that was great. Feeling relieved about that. We spent a couple of days with my auntie. Now it was time to get my cousin and his boat ready. It's um, a small fiberglass open boat, um, about 16, 17 feet ish, uh, five meters. And um, having everything prepared is really essential because people go missing here, they get washed, blown out to sea, and not found again. Their boat's upturned, and only a couple of years ago this had happened, and there are many scares in between because the safety standards are just not there. Gingella's just below Finchafen. And it took us about six hours bashing our way um, into a southeasterly, actually no, it was an easterly wind. Um, and we stayed there with family um, where we've stayed before. This was about the halfway point um, through to to one, and um, it was becoming dark at that time, so we had to stop somewhere. All right, we've uh, stopped at Gingale on our way to to one. We have a bit 
we left a little bit late in the day, so we're a bit um, behind the weather or behind the day. So we've stayed, stopped at Gingoli, and we'll stay here overnight. There's Via Lucas, I reckon you'd love it out here, son, catching a fish off the edge here, or just going out into the little reefs close to this. Yeah, good flower. Okay. We've decided to wait here from Lay, and it's a bit tiring. We would have arrived at seven o'clock at night at um, Tuam, um, and these guys don't have lights on their boats and that, so it's safer for us to go tomorrow morning early. On the trip to Babangya, we discussed the heavily heavily militarized presence here during the War of the Pacific. Bob on Yara is the closest point to Tuam. We call this a place for Masalai and a really dangerous passage but it has a spiritual side to it as well and we believe you can't talk when you cross from that point to Tuam and that you must only face toward the Tuam island itself. It's very treacherous in that area, big, big water, big ocean and really deep and it's not uncommon for boats to be also run into or run into trouble and get pushed further out to sea. Arriving in Tuam, we were excited to see much of our family there. It was awesome, I haven't seen many of them since I was very small. And catching up with uncles and aunties and cousins and realising that you have such a big family and such a small island. Um, surviving in the middle of the ocean there um, on their gardens and, and fish. Arriving there, this was cause for celebration because I was there when I was only very young and mum and I both coming back was really important. So it was pretty amazing to catch up with everyone and food was just coming out left, right and centre. All the preparation for it, it was about two days of preparation. And what name name belong little monkey here? <laughs> My uncle sounded the conch shell and um, the whole village went up to the cemetery site and all cleaned it. Really important, there's still many things done under a tribal leader. It was one of my uncles, and um, everybody follows that person's uh, requests. But a lot of this is tradition anyway. But once a month this happens, where all people go and maintain the cemeteries. And this actually was where the original uh, people, our people, my people, lived when the sea level was much higher. So where we live today, down on the bottom, is actually a low point, and that was all underwater, submerged. Sea level rise is a global issue and it's affecting many areas across the Pacific where um, high tides are inundating villages and um, this next one, uh, this island is known as Aramot. Every high tide the island has water through it and if you look at this island, there these are people, there's several hundred people here who will be displaced over time and they will not have anywhere to live, they will have to live on the mainland. Another challenge after the displacement of these people moving to an island such as Umboy or further on is that they now compete for resources on that island or on that mainland um, and land is a real big issue. So this can cause a lot of drama moving forward and if you look at the historical ties to country this then poses challenges even further down the track on where people belong simply due to displacement. Alright, so after we went into Lab Lab, where my older brother was born in there, 
Uh, it was the first time I'd been in there. That was awesome. But we came back out to two on. We spent another uh, 10 days out there. Basically, we were out there for two weeks. And then it was time to come home. Lovely as it was, I was looking forward to getting home um, and um, being with my other family um, back at home here in Australia. We actually came on an open fiberglass boat, but we were heading back in a traditional style wooden canoe made out of one log, uh, quite a large machine and had a 40 horsepower, 40 or 60 horsepower engine on the back. Really interesting though, as we were going over waves, these larger waves, you'd hear the whole thing shudder and uh, there'd, there'd be this vibration that went from the front to the stern and the whole time I was thinking, is this going to snap, Am I gonna, are we going to go up over a wave and is this going to snap and we'll all be swimming. That didn't happen fortunately, but um, what did uh, occur was numerous ships coming through that shipping lane and we had massive squalls coming back across. And that was quite tough because the engine was also, it sounded like it was missing a little, which I found out there was an issue further down. But um, we'll continue on. There's a lagoon in here just through that mouth opening there. That's where we're going to have to go. It's very narrow, shallow, but once we get in, it's nice and wide. So, guys, this brings me to the end of my uh, video. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe, um, and hit that like button if um, you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.